Hey everyone, Ken and Profit here. Welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're going to texture bake inside of Blender. So let's jump right into it. I have this rock that I created in a previous tutorial. You can go back and check that out if you want to set up this procedural rock shader, or you can download this. I'll make that available, link in the description through my Patreon, and it also helps support the channel when you grab that. So it's a win-win. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to texture bake exporting your model to something like uh, a game engine or Sketchfab or something like that. Um, or also just kind of speed up render times so Blender doesn't have to cook all these nodes every time you're rendering out an animation. To set up a texture bake, it's actually really simple. You do want to make sure you're in cycles. Make sure you're in the render panel settings. And if you scroll all the way down here, you'll see this bake option. Now you can choose the combined method right here, which is going to bake essentially all of the lighting in your scene. So it's going to take into account the direct and indirect lighting and just bake that right onto a single image texture. And then you wouldn't be able to relight your scene. You'll lose the ability to relight your object. Uh, it has its place. It can be kind of cool, but that's not what we want to do. We want to set up the different uh, texture maps that are connect connected into my principal BSDF. So you can see uh, we have the color, we have some roughness right here, and we have some bump, which will be our normal map. So put all that together into our principal BSDF and you get that. But like I said, these are all procedural nodes. We want to turn them into single images. So let's change this from bake type of combined to just diffuse and we'll bake out just the color of our object here. So I'm going to split this window right here and just set this to the UV image editor. And if I tab into edit mode, you'll see this object was just a simple icosphere. All I was using was just the automatic UVs right here. And UVs are critical to texture baking. You can't do it without UVs. So uh, either use the automatic UVs that an object like this has generated, or you'll have to unwrap your object, press U, unwrap, do the seams and all that stuff. I don't know, it's not, not a UV tutorial, sorry. Uh, but you do want to make sure that you have UVs on your object. The automatic ones will work just fine. Uh, so we have that. I'm going to create a new image texture, and I'm going to call this rock diffuse so that we get just the color in here and obviously this is the resolution you can set this to whatever you want i'm just going to double it so i'll do times two uh handy little math function right inside blender mathy mathy smart blender create a new image and it'll create this nice big image texture right here now what you need is to visualize that image texture in a shader editor so let's press shift a and drop in an image texture and then just grab that one we just created so I'm going to grab rock diffuse this image we just created right there. And now I have that in my shader editor. So now Blender knows, all right, we're trying to bake the diffuse. We're going to use the UVs of this object and we're going to bake it onto this image texture. When we created this rock in the previous tutorial, you'll notice uh, that I just all I did was subdivide a simple icosphere and then add added displacement to keep everything really light and simple. And we got that shape. So when you're running the bake, make sure that you're not in edit mode because it'll bake based off of this nice round <laughs> sphere and you won't get the cool highlight right there in the certain uh, roughness shape that we get that is specific to the post displacement. But it's totally cool. You don't have to apply the displacement modifiers. Everything will be fine as long as uh, you just make sure you're in object mode when you run the bake. So now with all that done, make sure you uncheck direct and indirect. We don't want any lighting applied. We want just the color of our object baked onto this image texture. And then you're good, good to go ahead and just hit bake. It might take a couple minutes just to run the bake. It's totally dependent on how complex your node setup is and how much resolution you made this image texture, but it shouldn't take too long. So there we go. We got our diffuse baked out. You can see over here, all those highlights are saved nicely. And the way to test this is really to just uh, take this image texture and feed it right into the principal BSDF. And if nothing changes, then everything was set up correctly. That's exactly what you want. Uh, you can just replace all those nodes with one single image texture. You do want to make sure that you save that texture on your computer or wherever you want. So now it'll reference it from your hard drive and everything will be nice and safe. And then it's just a matter of repeating the process for the other connections you have on your rock here. So what I would do is create a new texture here. I'll call this rock roughness and create new image. And then I'll just do the same thing. 
image texture and grab that rock roughness one that I just created. And then under bake, instead of diffuse, I'll set it to roughness. And what that's gonna do is just grab all of this data right here that's fed into my roughness and it'll bake that into its own image texture. There we go, the roughness all baked out. So now we can disconnect all these frustrating procedural nodes. They're not really that frustrating. And feed it right into the roughness and we get our roughness back. So uh, like I said, here's the before, there's the nodes, hook up the image and there's no change. Uh, that's how you know you did it right. So without the roughness, feed that in. And there's the roughness, a little bit of light breakup right there, which is exactly what we want. And then the final node we have uh, is a normal map. And we'll just go ahead and create that real fast. So I'll name this rock normal and same exact steps. Set it from roughness to the normal map and go ahead and bake that out. All right, so there's my normal map. It's not too interesting. It's just some noise with a little bit of bump on there. But we can go ahead and save that out as our normal texture. Save as. Now we can disconnect our bump map from our texture and instead use this image texture. So to do that, you'll just need to add a normal map node and connect the color into there and feed that right into the normal. And uh, my strength wasn't quite this high on my bump map, so I'll just take that down a bit. And now you can see a little more interesting bump in there. And I had it plugged into the tangent as well. And you wanna make sure you set this to non-color data and that takes care of that little fold right there. But there we go. Now what we can do is grab all of these procedural nodes and just delete them. And now we've simplified our material down to three simple image textures. Way easier to read just a simple image texture fed into a BSDF um, and go software to software if you need to export this to something else. Uh, now that we did this, you can switch right into Eevee if you wanted to do that. And you get all those textures applied uh, just like that because it's reading the same image textures and what's also cool you tab out uh, So now, you know, I'm out of uh, let's see let me grab this say I wanted to turn off this displacement and just keep it a sphere Well, all those little highlights are still there, which looks, you know, looks kind of goofy But you can imagine there might be certain circumstances where you would want that want kind of a painted texture There's a lot of different possibilities a lot of different reasons you would want to bake image textures down and uh, now you know how to. It's really quite simple. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, shout out to all my Patreon members. I really appreciate you. As always, if you're a member of my Patreon, you can grab this file, link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.